I'm afraid to die. This one sentence kickstarts everything in this manga. This sense of self-preservation that every human is born with. Something that if you no longer have, if you want to die, we treat you. We have therapists. It is seen as strange if you willingly want to die. And in this world, we find that this one sentence is cause for concern. I'm just another reader, and today we're reviewing Starving Anonymous 2, or Shokuru Jinru Re-Starving Revelation. I hope I pronounced that right. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. But without further ado, let's jump into chapter one and see what you can expect from this manga. So we begin in the counseling room, and we've got our counselor that's like, what's wrong? It's not like you ask for advice out of the blue. And our main character says, I'm sorry. Don't be, I'm glad you came to me if something was wrong. It's just, I've been feeling sort of weird. And the counselor says, weird? I'm not sure how to put it. Well, I, I'm afraid to die. And we've got a dramatic shot here because as you see when we go through chapter one, this is quite a strange sentence to say. And so we cut away and we're looking at the schoolyard. We're looking at people playing. We're back to the counselor room and he's like, well, I mean, well, maybe not afraid as much as, honestly, it's hard for me to explain it like this. I, uh, I just, dying seems like, it seems like it would be scary sometimes. It's just a thought I've been having, that's all. And for us readers, we are looking at this and like, yeah, that seems completely normal for a kid to think. And there's just a look of horror on the therapist's eyes. And he's just like, um, no, I mean, so clearly something he said has unnerved her greatly, just based on the, the close zoom we get on her eyes and the sweat dripping down her brow. And, he, and our main character backtracks, he's, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I didn't mean anything by it. I, well, hmm, I'm sorry, I was just a bit shocking. Hmm, well... And your teams are going through so many new experiences and feelings. Having some fears is completely understandable. If your concerns get too strong, then you should see a counselor. I'm fine now. Thank you. So our guys backtracked a little bit. Lunch break is over, so please go back to class. Yes, ma'am. And so he says, excuse me. He's like, yes. And yeah. And then we see the counselor get up. She makes a phone call and she says, hello, it's me. I need something. There's a child of some interest. His name is Amazawa Hiroki, age 17. That look on my teacher's face. I really went up and said something freaky. Ugh. Hey, Hiro, huh? Help me out with this. Yuzu, what is it now? Come here. What is it? And then we see him. God, this way. Here, here. Okay, good. Keep going. Open the window. And woof. It was a butterfly she wanted to say. We did it. Yay. Why did you need my help with that? Well, I can't ask anyone but you because, well, you've always liked bugs, I guess. Anyway, where were you earlier, huh? Um, well, don't worry about it. What's with you? Tell me. It's nothing. There's no way I can tell her. If word got out, then I'd lose all my friends and I'd end up just like Hulk Hayoki did. And we see this bandaged individual. Ding dong, ding dong. We got an announcement. Please stay tuned for an important announcement from the principal. All classes should now stop and turn on the class TVs. And we see the principal here. Good morning, everyone. It's me, Principal Takahashi. Today, I'd like to announce that our school is receiving an incredible honor. The result of last month's national physical examinations have been announced. The winner is our very own class 2-3. What? Our class? Who is it? Who is it? The next shipment will be Hazunama Yuzu. I am pronouncing these names so badly, but this is clearly a big moment. We've got a nice wide shot and everyone in the class is celebrating that Yuzu will be the next shipment. And we're gonna find out pretty soon what that means. And she is shocked in silence. Yuzu, that's amazing, you did it. And our main character is just very shocked. Also, Yuzu had one of the highest taste scores as well. And then everyone's clapping. And the girl's crying, I thought I'd win for sure. There's always next time. And then she's going up to the front of the class. Yuzu is the next shipment. And we've got this look of fear on our main character. Hazuma, 
please go to the principal's office. Um, right. So then she's going to die just like that. By then. Well, back to class. So anyway, the plankton are eaten by sardines and other small fish. Those small fish in turn are eaten by larger fish. Those fish are then eaten by the largest fish in the ocean like sharks and tuna. And when the, those predators die, their bodies break down eaten by plankton. What's this called, Izawaxi? The food chain? Correct. It's the same for us humans. We raise cows and other herbivores so that we can eat them. Then we humans are offered up to the heavenly beings to be consumed. Finally, when the heavenly beings live out their natural lifespans, we receive their bones as nourishment. And then we get another look of fear after we just got that explanation of the world we're in. We also receive the heavenly beings most perfect guidance and rule. This perfect guidance is what human beings have eternally dreamed of. They have helped us achieve world peace, resolved all pointless quarrels, ushering in an era of true peace or something like that. Being chosen to be eaten by the heavenly beings is the highest honor imaginable. So here we have the caveat, the catch of what makes this world scary. The humans are not at the top of the food chain. There is something called a heavenly being that is actually at the top of the food chain. And if you've re read the previous novel from this author that this is a sequel of, Starving Anonymous, you know exactly where this is going. So next item, there's a ball game coming up. Let me know if you'd like to join. Anything else? I have a proposal. Oh, Yamagata-san, what is it? Well, I really thought that I'd be picked for this round of exams. To think that Hazuma would be chosen instead, she must have worked so much harder than me. So I've decided to give her a surprise present. Would the class like to join in? Yeah, what should we give her? I, well, and then we can see some blood dripping down behind her. I like for her to have this. What is it? It is a severed finger. Quite a shocking image indeed. I just chopped my pinky off with a knife. I'd like for Hazuma to eat it. If she ate my finger and then the heavenly beings ate her, then it'd be the same as the heavenly beings eating me. She wants Yusu to eat her finger? And our main character's just like, that's insane. But everyone else, everyone else claps. This is seen as normal behavior in this world. And our guy is just like, what? Great idea, Yamakita. That's so cool of you, nice. I'd like to do it too. And our guy's just like, huh? Me too. Me too. Everyone's agreeing. Okay, the whole class is on it. Let's do it. The whole class? No one gets to say no? And then someone walks in. All right, kids. Quiet down. I can hear you all the way out in the hallway. Sensei, I'm saved. Sensei, all of us want to calm down. I'm listening. Everyone, a, what a great choice. I'd be glad to help you out. And our main character's like, Sensei, there's fear on his face. He's terrified. Everyone come to the teacher's lounge after class. And here we see a terrifying site. The little utensil that is used to cut paper in specific dimensions is there in a bucket. And I think you know where that is going. Now the next image is frightening. We have people cutting off their pinky fingers into this bucket, pouring blood out. It is terrifying. And whew, we've got another closer look at it. I just, they're just chopping the pinkies off in the bucket, making it quick. It is a brutal sight to see. And then we just hear screaming flesh offering if i lose any fingers i can't play piano can you help me of course ready yeah and then we just have her screaming ouch it hurts and she says hang on when it's done she's cutting off a piece of her ear i believe it is a terrifying sight and then we got another student saying if you cut off the circulation first it won't bleed as much try it and then boop we got another finger in the thing all right that's everyone oh wait a minute hero you still need to donate huh me uh I will, that's not, I, I don't want to, it's just, and our guy is scared because he's just witnessed brutality unlike anything he's probably seen before and he does not want to do it. Everyone else is pitched in. Wouldn't it be look bad if you were the only one who didn't? Amazula, do you not want to do it or something? Ew, come on, it'll be a great memory to look back on. You've got to share our pain, it'll be great. So this is what makes this world terrifying. There is just something off about everything. And then we've got a nice wide shot of them holding the bucket of fingers. The girl that lost her ear. They've all got bandaged hands. Come on, pitch in a finger. And our main character just throws up on all their severed fingers. It is quite the shocking sight to see. Ah, my finger, all of our fingers are spoiled now. No, I'm sorry, wait, no, listen to me. What a awkward blunder socially he is doomed and then we catch up with him he is washing all the severed fingers off in the bathroom sink 
shit, why am I like this? I can't believe it. I was so disrespectful, but I'm scared of chopping off the finger, which to us, the readers, is like, oh, that's totally normal. But something about this world is just different for him. He is not fitting in. More importantly, Yuzu's going to die. I can't believe this. I can't get my head around this. There's no way this is happening. Machi, me, what do you think? Hmm, well, he had a negative reaction so strong he puked. That's one way to show your true feelings, right? And here we've got to look at the two other main characters in this story. Those classmates are just merciless. If you won't give a finger, they pull out a tooth instead. Maybe yours will grow back. Anyway, we've got to make contact before he's disposed of. So, being an outsider in this world is a bit dangerous as we see here. So this is the third manga I have read from this author. The first one was a standalone piece, uh, Apocalypse No Tour Ride or For the Apocalypse about prison inmates being the last bastion of humanity pretty much due to their circumstances. But they were also a cruel breed of people because they were delinquents that ended up in this high security prison so early in their life. The second one, prequel to this current manga that we're talking about today is not as cruel in the main character's department, but it's more of a mystery of like, why did I get kidnapped? Where am I? How do I get out? What's going on here? This one is more psychological in every aspect because our main character is kind of waking up. He's saying, I am afraid to die. Something that is seen as strange in this world. I hate to use this phrase, but he is no longer a sheep compared to everyone else around him who are going with the flow, who are like, oh yeah, to be eaten by a heavenly being is an honor. But to him, he's like, wait, I don't want to die. I'm scared. And to us, that's completely normal. As I said in the beginning of the review, like in this manga, that one sentence, I'm afraid to die, is what kickstarts a lot of action. And that is very true. We see he's scouted by a group of people that's like, his disgust for this world is so strong. Now, that ostracized from his classmates and society as a whole is something you will really start to see explored in this manga, just how strange has the world become. Because in the prequel, human society was pretty close to ours. It was almost like, hey, this is a one-to-one -one of what our current reality is. This one is clearly much different. It's almost a isekai in the fact that our main character is just so confused by the world around him and the traditions and the expectations of society. He's just, seems like he's so new to the world that's probably my only complaint. He doesn't feel like someone that's lived in the world up to high school. He doesn't seem like he's a 16, 17 year old in this world. He seems like he just got here. That's my only complaint. And I know why it's like that. It's so he's a conduit for the reader. So when things are explained, it doesn't come off as strange or exposition. Or even though it is exposition, it doesn't come off as too much exposition. But I do like this explanation because and his first work, Apocalypse No Toride, that was a zombie manga. It was obvious what it was. The second work, Anonymous Starving, that was body horror. We really saw the artwork come up a whole notch to display just how terrifying the situations we were in. This one, the artwork, yes, is still amazing, but the writing is where we are starting to see the horror come from. The psychological like what is wrong with these people? And I really enjoy that aspect. And something to note, compared to the other works, this is the first work that I've read that is not finished. I'm sure we're coming up close to an ending within 30 chapters because none of his works have been longer than about 70 chapters so far and we're already at 41, which makes me think it should wrap up quickly, but who knows, maybe he wants to take this novel a bit further because this one, something I've been holding off until mentioning till now, is more shonen-esque in its world 
because yes, it starts as a psychological thriller, I'd say, but it very much becomes a high school superpower genre. Something like My Hero or Jujutsu Kaisen almost. It seems like he wants to go down that route with this world. And so far, it's working. The action is interesting. Their powers are pretty unique so far. If you are familiar with SCP, it's more of a flesh that hates route where a lot of their abilities come from biology and the twisting of flesh and blood to do unique things. But if I were to give this a rating, this is probably a nine out of 10 just because the intro is so strong. The first probably six chapters, it is impossible to set down because you've been thrown into such an interesting world. I highly suggest if you've read Anonymous Starving that you pick up the sequel because the ending for that novel was very much a cliffhanger. I won't say it here, but you know exactly what I mean, where that world story was not done yet. There was still much to be told, and we can see that something big happened between these two works. But I'm just another reader. Thank you for watching.